Hello and welcome to the YouTube channel of Kendra Engineering College. In this video session, we will be checking regarding photocouplers, one of the interesting device which need to be studied in optoelectronics. So, let us get to a real life problem where you say that you have a bulb here. Let us say that you have a bulb here, okay. This is your bulb. And this has wires. This is some wires here. And you have a voltage source, or you have a source. Let's say there is some source of energy which is going to turn, which has to turn on the bulb. So let's say this is my source. Now, as you can see here, these two devices or these two circuits. Let me say this is circuit one and this is circuit two. Let us say when you switch on the power from here, you want the bulb that is connected in the circuit 2 to be turned on. But if you can observe it very carefully, these circuits are electrically isolated. There is no connection that is existing between circuit 1 and circuit 2. Now the question is whether, they, whether it is possible to build any circuits which are of this kind which are electrically isolated. That is you have a power in one circuit and you have a device which actually will be working on that power in the different circuit and both the circuits are going to be electrically isolated whether these circuits can exist or in the practical world are there any circuits of this kind existing so the answer to this particular question is yes the circuits of this kind do exist in practical world and how is it feasible or how is it possible to make such circuits work. This circuits can be made to work by using a device which is called as photocoupler and the topic for this video session as well. So what are basically these photocouplers? Photocouplers or optocouplers are the devices that transfer electrical signals between two isolated circuits by using light. So very interesting, isn't it? Using light also it is possible to transfer electrical signal from one part to the other part of the circuit. So we came to know that light energy can be converted into electrical energy. We also came to know that electrical energy can be converted into light energy. But this is one of the interesting application or this is one of the interesting device which will be helping me in transferring an electrical signal or which will be helping me in transferring an electron from one part of the circuit to other part of the circuit which is electrically not connected, electrically they are totally isolated and the device which is going to do this particular task are called as optocouplers or you can also call as photocouplers. Couplers are, coupling means there are two circuits, both the circuits has to be brought together, that is coupling and how are they coupled? They are coupled using light, that is why we call this particular device as photo or optocouplers. So let us look out how this construction basically is. All optocouplers are normally photocoupler consists of two elements. One is a source which is a light or a light source normally an LED and other one is a photosensor. This photosensor can be a photoresistor, photodiode, phototransistor, silicon controlled rectifier or SCR or triac. In fact, we do not know about SCR or triac as of now but we know something regarding photodiode, right. So, let us let us think that the second part of the circuit is photodiode. So how does it, how, how can this work? So normally there are two circuits. So this is my first circuit. So my first circuit should be having an LED and the second circuit which actually needs the electrical signal from the first circuit should need a photodiode. As we are very familiar with the photodiode, I will just speak about photodiode right now because the remaining devices are not known to us. That is photoresistor or phototransistors are not known to us. So basically these are the things that exist. So how does this work? Basically how this circuit works? So let us get back. I will get back to the uh, theoretical working later. So let us say that you have a battery that is connected here. 
you have a battery that is connected here and you have a LED okay let us say that you have an LED here this is your LED so there is a device that is connected here that let us say there is a bulb let us say you have connected a bulb here so what do you want us when you turn on here when you turn on here this bulb should glow and when you turn off here this bulb should turn off but they are electrically isolated so what i do here is i connect a photodiode i connect a photodiode so when you turn on when you turn on the power supply here there is a led that is connected here led will be emitting light led will be emitting light the light that is emitted by the led will be made to be incident or you will make those particular light to be incident on this particular photodiode so from when the light from the led falls on the photodiode photodiode will normally turn on isn't it this will normally turn on when this turns on what should happen when this turns on what should happen it should supply energy it should supply power or there should be flow of current this flow of current is in turn going to turn on this particular bulb this particular setup is called as or this particular device is called as optocoupler even though i see this particular device separately but basically this particular setup is actually kept inside a particular box and that particular thing is called as optocoupler or you call that particular device is an optocoupler so you will be having a circuit here and you have a led here you have a photodiode here based on the light that is emitted by the led that light is made to be incident on the photodiode and a photodiode will turn on the function of the photodiode is to convert light energy into electrical energy isn't it so electrical energy is being supplied from here this electrical energy is transferred on to the other circuit which is electrically isolated so electrical energy is converted to light energy and the light energy is in turn converted back into electrical energy and this electrical energy will be turning on the bulb that is how it works and it has been explained here when the input current is applied to the led it switches on and emits infrared light so what they are saying is your led will turn on the photo sensor or the photodiode that is kept near the led will detect this light and allow the current to flow to the output side of the circuit which means that the load will be turned on when the led is off no current will flow through the photo sensor isn't it when the led is off there is no light falling on the photodiode because of which there is no light that will be falling on the photodiode or the photo sensor that is kept in front of this so using this method the two flowing currents are electrically isolated but it can be connected it consists of a led photodiode where the circuits are electrically isolated in the following figure yeah one more thing what i need to remember here is when i speak about led that is when i go back here you have an led here right you have an led here and you have a photodiode here so how should be your led be working led should be working in the forward bias condition and how should be your photodiode be working photodiode should be working in the reverse bias condition so in the photo coupler or opto coupler leds which will form a primary part of the circuit will be forward biased and photodiode which will be forming the secondary part of the circuit will be reverse biased that is what it is explained here in the following figure led is forward biased and photodiode is reverse biased and output across exists across the load and the load what i have connected here is r2 this r2 is nothing but a resistance so normally whatever load i connect will be having some resistance right so normally the load in general i'll be rest, i mean uh, representing it by your resistance so you can see the circuit so you can see this is your power supply this resistance is nothing but the resistance of the battery itself this is not an extra resistance that is connected here this is the internal resistance of the battery and you can see a diode led so led is forward biased positive is connected to positive negative is connected to negative right after that when the power supply is given this is going to emit light that light is absorbed by the photodiode and the photodiode will be turning on the load that is connected here so this is basically your bulb or any application what you connect here and you can see here the photodiode what i have connected is actually reverse bias positive terminal is connected to negative and negative terminal is connected to positive so this is forward bias and your photodiode is reverse bias this is the way in which it actually looks like actually my optocoupler comes in terms of an ic or it 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 is actually built up in an ic and the terminals 1 2 3 4 5 6 so you can see a photodiode here and you can see an led here so the ground connection and the power incoming pin that is positive terminal here 
negative terminal here. Here you can connect the load. So pin number 5 and pin number 6 you can connect the load. So this is how your optocoupler normally works. In spite of being electrically isolated, I can transfer the power from one circuit to the other circuit. Yeah, in fact, if you ask me, sir, whether there are any other ways, if you people have studied uh, basic electrical engineering, what I could have done is, I could have connected a transformer here. So, there is one coil here in the primary and there is one more coil in the secondary and there is one dielectric medium which is connected in between. So, you will be uh, giving the voltage to the primary turns and the because of mutual induction, the power will be transferred onto the secondary coil. But here, it is not of that high end application or the energy transferred is not of that high level, it is of the normal level or the very lighter applications. That is why we use optocouplers. Applications, yeah, input and output switching in electronically noisy environment. So, for example, if you have got any environment where you cannot do or where there is a lot of noise, noise in a sense, lot of disturbance, you can transfer the input and output between two circuits. Controlling transistors and triacs. Normally, if the circuit cannot be connected electrically, you can control them. SMPS. SMPS is nothing but your switched mode power supply which exists in your power, I mean systems. PC modem communications, that is for your routers and all the things. Signal isolation, power control. So, you have a lot of applications which comes under this particular opto couplers or photo couplers. So, one of the important topics and one of the interesting person to be studied in your opto electronics. Thank you.